What's going on everyone? Juice Bags here and welcome back to Tower Defense Tuesday. This is a older classic that in my opinion really is a must-have tower defense game. If you're a fan of tower defense and particularly if you're a fan of ARPGs like say Diablo or Path of Exile, you will absolutely love this game. Now, Death Trap from Neocore Games did launch on Steam February 4th, 2015, so it has been around for a while. Now, there's two reasons that I wanted to feature this game today. Uh, number one would be, as I said, it, in my opinion, it's just a must-have tower defense game. If you love the franchise, you will love, or if you love the genre, pardon me, you will love this game. Uh, in addition to that, it has been around since 2015, and we are approaching the holiday season where there will be Steam sales and various platform game sales in abundance uh, throughout over the next couple of months. And just about every Steam sale, Death Trap is on sale. Now, the normal price of the game is $19.99 on Steam, and Death Trap is available on all platforms. So, if you're an Xbox player, a PlayStation player, a Switch player, a PC player, you can get a hold of Death Trap. Uh, I will put a link to the Steam page down in the description below. However, remember, Death Trap will without a doubt be on sale. It's a game that you really must have. And in addition to that, it's available everywhere. So let's dive on in and take a Tower Defense Tuesday look at Death Trap. Alright, now first things first, it has been a long, long time. I actually haven't played Death Trap since uh, probably 2015 in its release year. It has had lots of updates, but it hasn't had a single DLC. Now, this is one of those games that, in my opinion, is an absolute travesty that it we never got a Death Trap to. It was just a really good game on all ends. Now, being from Neocore Games, this is in the Van Helsing era or lore and story background, which is definitely in-depth through the various games and super, super fun. Now, as you see here, I've got two different characters I have played with over the years. I've got a level 41 marksman and a level 32 sorceress. Uh, we're going to stay on the sorceress today and let's look at some of the game features. Now, you can play the game single player, uh, online co-op, or versus mode. Now, I did queue up for a versus mode to try to get uh, some footage for this Tower Defense Tuesday video and could not get a match to pop. So the player base is super low. Uh, I can't say on other platforms, but I am going to assume that the versus mode could potentially be dead. Uh, not positive there. If you play uh, Death Trap on any platform, make sure to let me know down in the comments below if you have a hard time or are able to find matches in versus mode. Uh, so for the rest of this one, we're gonna pop into single player mode and let's take a look through just the various elements of the game. Now, as I mentioned, this game is a tower defense game at its core. However, it is very heavily influenced by the ARPG genre. So if we take a look at our character sheet, it has a very familiar inventory style. Uh, there is loot. Loot, loot. Uh, of course, every game that has loot, of course, adds a little bit of replay value as you're always trying to get the best stuff. But a uh, very familiar setup is like Diablo or Path of Exile as far as your loot capacities and what you can store. Now, you do have a stash as well, so you can always throw things in the stash. Taking a look at our skills. Now, this is nowhere near as in-depth as, say, Path of Exile, obviously but it does have a good bit of versatility in how you play. So taking a look through this skill tree for my Sorceress, I have gone with Ice Bolt as my primary attack. So this Sorceress is focused on Ice Damage with Lightning Damage as a secondary. So my primary and secondary attacks are Ice and Lightning. And uh, this is kind of like a Chain Lightning ability. Now, we went with Shivering Curse. All enemies already present on the map are afflicted with vulnerability against ice damage for a short time. Of course, pairing nicely with my Ice Bolt. 
Uh, I've got Icy Wind. All enemies on the map take ice damage. That, of course, all pairs together with my Shivering Curse and then my Ice Bolt. We've got a Trap Boostar. All traps within 8 meters gain a damage bonus for a short time. Uh, this is a tower defense game, and I am a boosty boy with my traps. And then I've got Soul Snare, Soul Snare Aura, Puller, pardon me. While this skill is active, you gain a damage boost each time a trap kills an enemy within 10 meters from you. So I'm going to be close to my traps as I want to boost them. And additionally, I'm going to get boosted from my traps as they kill. Now looking through uh, the skill trees, that Ice Bolt is my primary. I also went off to Chilling Bolts to increase the slow effect of Ice Bolts. Uh, and the damage, and then channel bolts where each ice bolt recharges mana when it hits an enemy. Now, you can kind of go through and diversify and expand on your stuff as much as you want. Uh, as you see with Trap Boostar, I didn't go into that as deep. I wanted to get the boost. However, I didn't get any uh, level ups on that. You can also extend the range and then the duration of your Boostar. Uh, then in addition to that, with the Soul Snare, I didn't th go deep into that as well, uh, as I just want to have the ability, and I wasn't as concerned with getting massive points into it. And then we've got Mark of the North, which is a passive skill I went into. 15% Ice Vulnerability for all enemies, once again, just all building on that Ice Damage. Now remember, this is going to affect your traps as well. Uh, Icy Wind, I took that all the way up to 10 also, just for that large AoE dump. And then just one point into Shivering Curse as well, just to get some more Ice Vulnerability for all enemies in the area. Now taking a look at traps, you can customize your traps just as well. So once again, I'm all into Ice Damage, so I'm going with an Icicle Field here. Uh, I went full ham on that all the way across. I got all the upgrades into my Icicle Field. Uh, taking a look through at some of the others, I do have an Olympus Pillar here, which is lightning damage. Uh, I've got an Acid Geyser just to get a different uh, damage type effect and a little AoE. Uh, I've got an Essence Trap, which allows us to collect more Essence. Uh, essence is our resource that's going to allow us to build more defenses. We've got a Voltaron Coil, which is basically Chain Lightning from a tower. So it's going to get the Zappy Zap going out there on all the bads. We've got a Frost Pillar, which is a continuous beam, like a laser beam, that's going to slow enemies and do damage to them. Uh, I've got the Winter Queen Sigil, which is a summon. So we're going to have a summon out on the map. And once again, all going back to the ice type build. Now, it does have a store just like you would in many other uh, ARPGs where you can buy various pieces of equipment. There is a crafting system where you can craft pieces. Uh, a full encyclopedia talking about what enemies are available. So you can look and see what enemies are upcoming on the next match. Say if you've got Kobold, Wart Fiends you're going to see it's a strong protection. They have strong protection against piercing traps, and they're very vulnerable to a splash damage type traps. So it gives you an idea on how to strategize and build out what you're doing based off of the enemies that are present. It does have a leaderboard system, of course, and one thing I messed up and left out is it's got a level editor, an actual in-game level editor where you can create your own levels and then share them on the Steam Workshop. So let's hop on into a map and check it out. Now, it's been a long time since I played it. I'm going to pop into... Um, I don't even know what I'm going to do. Let's do one of the easier maps since it has been many, many years. Uh, we'll keep it on normal and let's go battle it out. All right, now as I mentioned, the game 100% feels like an ARPG. It feels exactly like the movement of Diablo 3 or Path of Exile. Um, a lot of the controls are exactly the same as far as using your abilities, popping your potions, all that good stuff. Uh, however, it is a tower defense game at its core. So we take a look here. We've got a lane of enemies coming this way. We've got a lane of enemies coming from the other side. Now, these enemies are going to go take different paths to the core. So, although they all pass by this point, 
uh, this lane is going to come this way and that lane is going to come down through the middle. One thing I like to do the second I load into any map is the game does feel kind of slow. Now, what I mean by that is just your progression going through the lanes. Now, that's if you go at normal speed. Once again, it's a tower defense game. You can speed it up. This is going to make you run around the map quicker, even when you're in your build phase. Uh, in addition to that, you do have portals where you can jump to various points throughout the map wherever you want to. Now, let's start things off right here. Um, here, I think we want to go with an essence trap as this will be a big killing area for us. Uh, let's get this Whirlblade column down and throw, a, let's say, a Lightning Pillar right there. So we've got 250 of our Essence left, which is our resource that we're going to use for building our defenses. Let's see, let's get our Winter Queen in. Let's go with an Icicle Field. That only leaves me 50. I don't have enough for much else. Um, I can go with another Icicle Field over here. Let's do that as well. That way it's relatively even as far as what's progressing through. Now let's go ahead and fire it up. Uh, if you actually wanted to, there is a half speed multiplier, which that the game would creep so slow if you did that. And going at double speed to me makes the game feel like it's in a really, really good place, to be honest with you. So let's get our curse out there and nuke the map here. Very nice. Uh, once again, just feels like a good ARPG. Not even a really bad ARPG. It feels like a good one. And being in the Van Helsing universe, of course, Neocore Games does have a little bit of history in the genre uh, with some other games that are in the same pattern of lore. So let's sit here and wreck them up. We'll get some chain lightnings going on. Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and boost it out and we'll buff ourselves for any tower kills here, so good stuff there. You see we've got a group of enemies made it past. Uh, we're gonna definitely want to come down here and see if we can't wreck these fools up. Keeping an eye on the mini-map, it looks like most of the enemies got nuked that were going down that large middle path directly to the objective. But we can uh, wreck these fools up here. Let's throw down another boosty boy, get uh, all boosted up so those towers are just screaming and once again might as well drop the nuke so just working having abilities work in conjunction with each other uh, i am throwing that shivering curse down first and then dropping the nuke on top of it so we're at the build phase again now we've got uh, what 435 essence and if we take a look we've got another new lane so there's going to be an additional wave coming down this lane those enemies are going to come directly this way and around so i kind of want to get a little upfront damage in where i can hit all of the enemies let's go with that icicle field since we are all frosty delicious and i think let's get uh just these whirlblade columns down because that's going to hit a lot of the enemies now you know guns are just cool in tower defense games so let's throw a gun sentry there just for the memes. Now, as you go through, you can upgrade your defenses you place. Now, these Whirlblade columns are kind of like environmental traps that are on the map. You still have to spend the essence to get them built. However, they're not going to be upgradable in the same fashion as your other defenses. So for 12 essence, we can upgrade the base damage of this by 30%. Uh, we can also upgrade... Uh, the area of effect for a gun tower, which that one kind of seems like a no-brainer to me So let's just go ahead and take it and we'll get a little AOE out of that gun century So let's get the next wave rolling here And see what we got now another awesome thing About the maps is there's bosses at the end of the map. So there's gonna be Champion flavored mobs that gonna roll out towards the end or at the end of the map that you're gonna have to defeat to, uh, you know, to beat that particular map. So we are wrecking it up right now. I'm just kind of spraying around all my, uh, all of my my area of effect. Get a little chain lightning going up in there as well. And oh yeah, we're getting it done. Now don't be fooled by me playing this on a higher level uh, character on an easier map. I'm doing that because I just haven't played in so darn long. This game on the higher difficulties 
offers a huge challenge. Uh, there will be a large strategy element into the game in building your characters correctly and using the proper defenses. It is hard when you play on the hard difficulty, so if you're looking for, you know, just a fun action defense game to play through, that's there for you. But if you're looking for more of a challenge, that is there for you as well. Uh, no doubt about it. Let's uh, do the map nuke. Uh, we only have 46. That's enough. not enough to build anything quite yet. Uh, that little frost rain that's coming down, or that ice storm, is coming from, uh, coming from my gal over here, the Winter Queen. And yeah, we are getting it done. Now here we got some uh, champion flavored mobs. These aren't the boss type mobs, but that is a more difficult mob. And they're very clearly marked on the mini map. So a lot of the play that you kind of come to just expect in a tower defense game, like if you have a mini map in an action defense game, obviously you want it to be accurate. And the mini map in Death Trap, I keep wanting to call it Van Helsing, is without a doubt just spot on. Now uh, we got another wave completed. We're heading into the final wave and let's look. We've got another lane opening up here. These enemies are gonna come this way and down. So we're gonna have lots of action right here in this area. Let's go ahead and get that down. Uh, I've got 124 left, which is not an absolute ton. I kind of almost want to drop a Winter Queen Sigil here, but I think she's going to get beat up. Or, I don't have enough essence for that anyway. That one's a buck fifty. Uh, what can we do over here? We can go with another Icicle Field. Hmm. I tell you what, let's go with an Essence Trap here as well to get some of that essence in right at the end. Uh, just so we can build any last resort stuff if we need to. I've got 24 left, which is not enough to do anything, but I'm only 50 essence away. Uh, I can get one of the pillar defenses here on this one. I think we're going to go with, um, well, what do we go over here? Over here we went lightning, so here we'll go with the frost pillar, uh, just to show you how that particular defense works. Let's go ahead and start the wave and get things rolling. Uh, now remember, when you pop your curses, it's going to be against enemies that are present on the map, so make sure they load in first. So as you see, we've got enemies in, I'm going to pop my curse, and I'm going to do my map-wide nuke after that. Uh, let's get ourselves up to 50 essence, and we'll drop that frost pillar there. So we'll get that side nuke down, and we can go ahead and get our frost pillar up here. Uh, it's like a laser beam, you know? It's going to channel into the enemies there. Oh, this, uh, this guy was a teleporter. Get the smackdown going on him. Let's uh, buff up. Actually, do we need to buff up? We don't even need to buff up. Actually, we can buff this area right here. Uh, let's go ahead and get our damage boost as well, and then we'll curse, and then nuke the whole map. Uh, now that we got enemies present, I could have waited a little longer on that one. I missed a few of the stragglers there at the end, but it's all good. Uh, that will be up again in no time. I'm gonna throw down that boost star there in this particular area. And we should be getting relatively close to the end of the map here now. Let's get some damage in on these guys. As soon as I get all the enemies out there, I'm gonna throw the curse and the uh, map-wide damage nuke again. But I do want to wait until everything is out here and on the map. It looks like most of that wave is there, so let's do it. You saw a lot of the red dots disappeared on the mini-map. So that is kind of a big map-wide nuke that you can use. And it just works really hand-in-hand -hand going with uh, the, the ice damage sorceress here, like I had this build set up. Alright, now we've got, uh, we've got a bunch of essence and we've got bosses coming. What do we want to do? Hmm... I think we want to get some upgrades in, maybe. Let's get the slow. Let's jack that one way, way up, in fact. Uh, here comes Boss Man. Let's go ahead and curse and nuke and get a little bit more frost damage going. He's coming at me. 
Okay, so we got one down, and then now we got Sahak, the Dismemberer, who is our final boss on this one. Now remember, like I said, this I'm playing it on easy mode for the sake of the video here. The game is challenging. It's quite tough. So it will bring the challenge for anyone who wants the strategy element of the game, no doubt about it. And as I said from the very start, in my opinion, Death Trap is a must-have action defense game in your library. And of course, you know, you gotta have the loot. So we got us some loot to go along with it. So that will do it for this episode. Thank you all so much for watching. But that is a Tower Defense Tuesday look at Death Trap. Add this one to your wish list, y'all. Keep an eye out for it on the sales that will inevitably be here over the course of the next 60 days or so. So thank you all once again, and I will see you next time around. Take it easy.